When I was a child, my brother would tell me a bedtime story about the man who murdered our father and watched as his blood poured onto the floor. He told me other stories about all the things we would do to that man once we took back the Seven Kingdoms. When Jamie shows up to Winterfell, it's very difficult for almost anybody to know how to feel about it. On the one hand, Danny looks at him as this is the person who murdered her father. And even if she has come to terms with who her father was and what her father really was, it probably doesn't entirely erase the sting of her father's murderer showing up on her doorstep. Your sister pledged to send her army north. I don't see an army. She never had any intention of sending her army north. Tyrion has made a number of mistakes now, and Danny's really at the end of her patience because she has a lot of fondness and respect for Tyrion, but many of his plans have really gone awry. And now Jaime Lannister's here, but not with the Lannister army. Your Grace, I know my brother. Like you knew your sister. Tyrion can't really fight back because he knows she's right. I mean, he really did make a grievous mistake. If Tyrion has a flaw, he's a very clever man, but sometimes clever people um, overestimate their own cleverness. You don't know me well, Your Grace, but I know Sir Jamie. He is a man of honor. For Brienne, I think she's in love with someone who doesn't realize that she is because that kind of experience hasn't been a part of her life. She's feeling things that she can't really process because she never grew up in a world where those things were an option. She's so used to Jamie taunting her and, and being the kind of nasty Jamie Lannister of old that she's just suspicious at first that he's playing her and that he's gonna reveal his true intent. I'm not the fight I used to be, but I'd be honored to serve under your command if you'll have me. He really believes in her as a soldier and he wants to be there next to her. So I think she's really shocked by his sincerity. Lady Sansa, I was hoping we could speak alone. Danny comes to Sansa with a, a bit of an olive branch, trying to find a way inside that kind of cool exterior that Sansa presents. And one commonality between them is they both love Jon. Danny's his lover and Sansa's his sister. It's very much coming at it from the point of view of a monarch trying to make peace with her subject. And Sansa's not quite willing to accept Danny as her monarch yet. She's suspicious of people for a reason. What about the North? It was taken from us, and we took it back, and we said we'd never bow to anyone else again. What about the North? She's had too many hard experiences not to be suspicious of people, and she sees Danny as possibly a tyrant, as someone who who's, has a lot of power and is seeking to get even more. They're coming. We can't beat them in a straight fight. So what can we do? In the War Council scene, there's a lot going on under the surface. The most important thing about that scene is understanding the lay of the land and understanding what their intentions are, what their plans are, what their expectations are, so we know what we're looking at. The Night King made them all. They follow his command. If he falls, getting to him may be our best chance. Things may not go entirely according to plan, so we thought it was very important. For people to know what everyone in the room expected to happen, was worried would happen, hoped would happen. In addition to that, there are a lot of human moments. We'll put you in the crypt where it's safest. No, I'll wait for him in the godswood. We're not leaving you alone out there. He won't be. I'll stay with him. One thing that was definitely going on was how Theon felt after returning to Winterfell and how he's using this battle as, as an attempt to try to make good to the extent that that's possible on the horrible mistakes that he made. I took this castle from you. Let me defend you now. You're not the knight? Women can't be knights. Why not? Tradition. Any knight can make another knight. Kneel. Lady Brienne. Brienne has been more knightly than any of the knights I think we've seen. I mean, she's a paragon of strength and honor and being true to your word. When Jamie knights her, it's a general kind of validation she's wanted her whole life. But even more importantly, it's the acceptance and validation of Jamie, who she 
obviously has feelings towards that, that she's never really come to terms with or even allowed to bubble to the surface of her consciousness, but they're there all the same, and we can see all of those things swirling. Sabrian of Toph, Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. For us, what was interesting about this episode was always that it's our last night together, and everyone, I think, would face the end in different ways. We're probably going to die soon. I ought to know what it's like before that happens. Some characters want to make love for the first time because they've never done it before. There are other characters who are getting drunk and singing songs, and then there are characters who are just trying to find some kind of human solace together, like Sansa and Theon. Everyone faces it in different ways, but they're all facing it. And that's why this episode was so important to us because it's, you know, all these characters that we've been following for so long and now they're all facing a common enemy. How about a song? One of you must know one. High in the halls of the kings who are gone, Jenny would dance with her ghost. Daniel's got a really lovely voice, and we knew we wanted a song in this episode. We've had a song in several of the seasons. We haven't had a, an original in a while, so this felt like the place for it, and Daniel felt like the singer. The ones who'd been gone for so very long, she couldn't remember the names. They spun her around on the damp old stone. On away all her sorrow and pain. The song, I believe, is in George's books, um, at least the first verses in the books, and then we added some lyrics and Ramin came up with the music for it. I wanted to leave. Never wanted to leave. Never wanted to leave.